Hi guys, today we are going to start our session on Splunk administration. This course will mostly be focused on the entire administration of Splunk and some associated functionalities, some basic knowledge management types and as well some basic insight on Splunk. So let's get started. So what is Splunk? So there is a lot of uh, hubbub in the market recently on the Splunk. So Splunk is turning out to be one of the most efficient tool. It's being used by a lot of companies that falls in Fortune 500. So people have started uh, giving some uh, real good look at Splunk. So what is it basically? Why is it becoming so famous? What's the speciality of it? So let's ask a very basic question. What do you do when you need information about the state of a machine or a software? So you look at its log files. They tell you the state it is in and what is going on. So what are these log files? Basically log files are nothing but machine data. So what Splunk does is make machine data available to the IT infrastructure and it does it in a totally different way. So machine data is always relevant for better way of un better way of running IT. Uh, it can be helpful in doing audits, making system more secure, understand and respond to the behavior of customers, maybe uh, give a better service. And, and all this happens in a real-time mode. So that is something wonderful, right? So uh, doing all these things at the same time, one application providing the entire platform and that too in a real time. So that's, that's a lot we are going for. And leveraging this data, this machine data has always been complicated. So we had have this kind of uh, handling of machine data previously with SQL, DBL, ETL or other schema based architectures. But Splunk does this very seamlessly in a different way that we are going to find out soon. So Splunk is basically it's a non schema based. Uh, it follows a non schema based architecture where it had a collection of flat files from where um, it takes the rich data, the meaningful data that is part of the machine data and present it to you in a completely value add format, either in form of dashboards or alerts. So Splunk Enterprise is the platform for collecting, storing, correlating and analyzing machine data. So be it physical or virtual or cloud environment. So it does it in all of them. So Splunk can be basically defined as a Google for log files. As you, uh, whenever you need an information, you basically, what you do, you go to Google and you just type it in and it gives you uh, the data. Uh, it gives you the, the result, the, the desired result. So according to your connection, 4G or 3G, it gives you the faster you want it. Similarly, Splunk is the Google for machine data. So whenever you need a relevant details that is hiding in your machine data, you go ahead, type it in Splunk search bar. That will be part of the Splunk GUI. The Splunk web and it will present it to you with all the relevant details and be as the 3G and 4G matters in place of your internet connection to connect to Google, the hardware requirements would fit in the same category for your Splunk architecture. The better your hardware, better your specs are, the faster you will get the data, the more efficient your system will be in handling it. So that is what Splunk is about. So it's SPL language provide valuable insights so so basically the spl is the splunk programming language so it's basically what it does is it's a collection of around 300 commands that will be very handy writing down these languages so it can uh, write very simple searches from a very range of simple searches to a very complicated pivots as well using these spl language so this spl language it makes finding the data and modifying it, articulating it and correlating your results very easy. So next it, it provides business insights and operational intelligence. So what is basically business insight and operational intelligence? That is like business operation that IT is running on. So some insight or some intelligence into these operations and making it uh, more efficient and streamlining the process is always something that this IT industry looks for. So uh, what it does is it gives you a better insight in the data in to run your IT operations. So let's open the web console. So 
log in with admin credential and here I am logged in so let's go to the, the access controller the users and authentication yes so what is user and authentication is basically how an individual access plank and what are the roles he has been exposed to uh, to handle Splunk so as you can see I am opening Splunk with a admin access so there are several others other layer of roles that you can take leverage of and there are other different authentication methods as well so I'll just give you an overview of the authentication methods so the primary or the default one is the Splunk native authentication that is the internal authentication Splunk which is always on which you can uh, at any point of time you can roll back to that one because it will by default be always on so apart from that if you want any other external authentication you have these two the most possible possibly used external authentication me methods LDAP and SAML so there is a procedure to configure the LDAP or SML connection with the with the settings that would be provided to you so there are various sources of this uh, settings similarly for SAML uh, access as well you will have to fill up the form which will enable the SAML authentication so you can use this one or any of any of the other one, other two so this is how you access Splunk so we are using the native control native authentication that is a Splunk built-in one okay now the users so what and the users is basically there are multiple tiers of user that can access Splunk so now as you see we just have one admin access that has been created by me for my uh, reference so similarly an admin can give access to multiple other users so how the access is being given is you add a username of according in, uh, in line with the requester ID or requester name you give the full name the email address a generic thing time zone obviously uh, which time zone you want the user to be in because whatever searches the user would be doing will fall into that time zone obviously the user can go ahead and uh, change the time zones as and when required but yeah this is the default one that you will set up also the default app so once the user logs in which app would he see as we log in we see the search and reporting app that is there by default okay no yeah we uh, we see the search home page because nothing has been set up so these are the three options that we have as of now the Splunk management console or the DMC the search and the launcher so any of these app if you want to readily get access to once logged in so uh, this would be set up here so uh, in a lot of organization there will be multiple uh, application added application that are used suppose an app for the dashboard and the, uh, maybe the organization wants that once they log into the Splunk they want to see the dashboard so those things can be done from here now another part is assigning roles so these are the uh, prime roles that are available in Splunk the admin role the highest privilege role which can do almost anything so this is the highest amount of access that can be given to an user can delete okay this is a special role that had been curved out out of admin that is can delete so even an admin cannot delete uh, an index because index is a very sensitive thing once you delete an index there is no going back so all your data is lost so the delete command used in Splunk is a very prime command and it cannot be given to even an admin unless requested or he is responsible enough so from a business point of view so can delete is an added role that is given to the admins who needs to delete indexes so this is the role power power users have is like a generic user but with some extra uh, activity access uh, they can create and share the knowledge objects as in the alerts the dashboards the reports and also their uh, reports would be given a preference they can view and edit reports which has been shared with them so these are the uh, some of the main uh, users of the power user whereas a normal Splunk user won't have uh, such access they might be able to uh, create the knowledge objects locally but it won't be possible for them to share them and also the number of concurrent searches for all these roles are different so how many users doing parallelly how many searches would also depend on what all access each of them gets also the Splunk system role is a generic role for the Splunk system users
now you can always give multiple role to the same person suppose you want to uh, give use uh, maybe a can delete and a power role to a selected user so you can ch choose these two and uh, you can go ahead so you, these two has been elect added as a selected role so this way roles can be added also you can create a new role so completely suppose you have created this uh, with these two available roles you are creating a completely new genre of roles and maybe you need to give it to multiple people maybe not one maybe five so you create a new role along with the user a new role would be created which you next time when you log in you might see up here in the available role section so uh, on checking this box you will get an uh, get to do that next is set password which is some generic password that you will be configuring and you will be sharing it with the user so this is how basically you create an user for Splunk native authentication or Splunk built-in authentication which the user would use and accordingly he can react. Also roles as you have seen in the user section also we can add roles and there's a, sub a separate section altogether where you can go ahead and add new roles. So you, you have a role in mind you give it a name suppose it's for the security user so you give it a security personnel then give the default app again which app you want the user to be in when he logs into the system next is restrict search items so what all where all he can search and cannot search so those terms can be restricted you can use the boolean terms such as and or and uh, you can always mention that these are the uh, these are the places this is the host or these are the source type that he should not be accessing so the uh, here you basically restrict an user to some specific uh, portion of the Splunk. So you can customize, you are basically customizing the access of the user. Restrict search time range which is set to minus one. So set a maximum time window for searches for this role. So it basically means that suppose uh, for example set this to 60 to restrict the role searches to one minute over the most recent time specified in the search. You can also set this to 0 to explicitly make the window infinite or minus 1 to unset the window for this role can be overridden by imported roles. So basically here what you are doing is you can declare the maximum window for searches for this role. So how big this user can search suppose for 60 minutes maybe for 1 hour 2 hour the window of searches and that has been given access to this user. So you can set it to 0 for unlimited access whereas given minus one means that uh, the window for this role to unset the window for this role so this user might not be having any window assigned to him so this is a very light overview of what all can be done and what all are being done with the splunk user roles so this session was mostly about the access controls thank you